Hi everybody, this is Ernesto and... How's it going, Robert here. All right, so we are um, Cat Family Therapy and we just want to talk a little bit more about marriage. And Robert, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself again? I know everybody in the world knows you already, but let's... Oh, uh, yeah, world, world famous, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> world famous in Huntington Beach. Right, exactly. Yeah, so Robert Pay, licensed clinical psychologist and I work mainly with couples and adult men. Uh, in uh, other parts of my life, I'm uh, an instructor in currently a master's program, and I'll be working in a doctoral program next year. But uh, yeah, so tonight we're talking couples, which is uh, my favorite thing to work yeah. with in the therapy room. Yeah, you've been working with couples for a long, long time now. It seems like this is your niche. This is where you want to be. I, I do love me some couples. I don't know. I'm one of those cheesy people. You know, I love love. Um, so, <laughs> and you know... I, as a therapist, whenever I say something cliche, I usually couch it with, all right, this is going to be really therapist-y. I apologize, but, you know, how do you feel, right? Yeah, so yeah. I try to couch my cliches. But, yeah, I, I do love love. I love making relationships work, and especially the ones uh, where there really doesn't seem to be much hope. If they've been separated, they're, they're kind of on the path to divorce. Yeah. I'm a big believer that anybody, any relationship can be saved if both people are interested in saving it. Uh, so I, I love working with those kinds of people. You know, one of the things I... Um, I realize within the world of couples counseling, and not all of us do this, but there is a hypersensitivity and hyper focus on what is wrong with couples, mm. right? We, we, unfortunately, the mental health um, community has been pathologizing people for so long and mm -hmm. also relationships. There's, if you're mindful about what you're actually focusing on in couples counseling, there's a lot of focus on the negatives, what's going wrong, and it's there's that negative loop, right? What do you think? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and I mean, maybe that's kind of our medical model we've gotten used to as a field where we're thinking about diagnosis and we have to think about what's wrong and what are the symptoms and how do we alleviate those symptoms. And uh, so I know you've been teaching a course this year on positive psychology, and there's now kind of more of a, a stream of research in couples work looking at the positives, what does right. work, what should we be focusing on. Uh, so I actually came across an article I wanted to throw in tonight that had some uh, interesting pieces that I think are relevant for us. But, uh, but yeah, so just trying to get away from the negatives and you know focusing too much on what's not working and trying to problem solve uh, and maybe thinking more about what are some of the good things we can be looking for. Yeah, so let's, let's start off with that. Um, so now that we know that there's a movement in um, doing things that are different in couples work, which is let's see what's going on that is working in your relationship. Let's, let's see what's working in uh, everything that you're doing to enhance your intimacy, your communication, all of those things. This is a very interesting article that you came across. So tell us a little bit more about that. Yeah, so um, I was looking in the Journal of Family and uh, Couple and Family Psychology and um, came across an article looking at a concept called romantic competence. Whoa. And uh, yeah, so it, it's a cool concept. And for those of us that love working with couples, it should be interesting for us. Can you say that um, term again? Yeah, romantic competence. Wow, so, it uh, even sounds good. <laughs> so a researcher named Davila out of uh, Stony Brook University in New York uh, has been looking for several years here at this idea of romantic competence. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and read a a couple of quick definitions for you just because I want to make sure I, I do them justice here. Um, so the three core components of romantic competence are insight, mutuality, and emotion regulation. So uh, when we're thinking about insight, we're looking at awareness of our own and our partner's needs. Mm -hmm. And this idea of mutuality is now consideration of those needs because Lord knows there are many relationships where we're very aware of the other True. person's need, but we don't give a flying rats behind about it, right? We're not that interested in meeting that need. Absolutely. Um, so we could talk more about that, but um, so it's consideration of those needs and then attempts to maximize those needs. So trying to meet them. Okay. Uh, and then emotion regulation. And this isn't just general emotion regulation, but the ability to regulate our emotions in response to relationship relevant experiences. Wow. So in the context of things that are going on within your relationship or things that impact your relationship. Okay. So you've, ter you've, you've thrown a lot of scientific, <laughs> some jargon there that I'm, I'm still trying to process in my brain. What if a couple is watching this and you're explaining to them those three components, you'd say, number one, what would that be? Okay, so if we're looking at insight, uh, am I paying attention to what my partner has going on for them? So if my partner is having a hard time at work or in a, a friendship or something going on with her mom or something like that, am I at least aware 
of what's going on for them and especially here, what might their need be in this situation? So what do they need to hear from me or receive from me? Uh, am I aware? So that's the insight piece. Am I at least aware? And for a lot of people in, in relationships, they don't have that piece down. So we need to work on that piece first. So as the therapist, I'm probably just going to be calling attention to the things that are happening as they're happening because the other person needs practice at noticing the, the little Got signs, it. the looks that change, you know, if their eyes bug out, you know, Insights. if they move away a little bit. Yeah. So just helping them to gain some awareness of what their partner might need. In you know, life. that makes a lot of sense because sometimes when you are heated in discussion, you are turning inward, mm -hmm. right? You are making, you, you are focusing a lot about your reaction, your responses, all of those things. And we have insight into what's going on with us, mm -hmm. but we not necessarily have insight to what's going on with somebody else mm -hmm. or our partner. Good. Yeah, well, and I mean, actually, a lot of us have a hard time insight into our own needs. We're just right. kind of reacting and responding emotionally. Oh. Uh, so, you know, <laughs> if I don't have control over my own thoughts or even awareness of them, how can I have awareness of my partner? So. Good point. Good point. So, again, number one, insight. Mm -hmm. uh, that's that's one. Okay, yeah. what's the next? And then this mutuality one, this, this brings up something that I talk about with almost all of my couples. I end up talking about how when we get married, and the vows can vary depending on whether you went to a courthouse or a religious ceremony or whatever, but the gist of the idea is that I am no longer going to be putting myself first in life. Mm -hmm. I'm married to you. I'm kind of hitching my wagon to yours, and we are rolling together now, and you now are my priority as my partner. So a lot of our, our couples that we work with, they've lost that piece, and they've started to put their own needs first, mm -hmm. and a lot of times it's because we have this fear that the need's gonna, not going to get met, and right. that's probably out of experience, and we're saying it hasn't been met for however many weeks, months, or years, so why should I start thinking it's going to get met now? So we kind of pull back, and out of fear, we start taking care of our own needs. So to get back to the romantic competence here, this idea of mutuality means that we're not only, again, aware of our partner's needs, but then that we are considering them, actively considering them, thinking about them, how might I be able to meet this need and meet it well so that they're satisfied in the relationship. So not thinking about my satisfaction, but is my partner satisfied? Awesome. So give an example of what this looks like in a heated argument or if one partner feels ignored, what does this look like? How would you deal with that? Work with that? Yeah. Oh, gosh. So um, I think making sure that they have the awareness first is going to be good. So checking their level of insight. And then it becomes kind of a conversation about am I willing to set aside my own need for, for a time. Okay. And for a lot of couples, especially those that are in high distress, and if one person has created some of that distress, maybe with some trust-related issues. Yeah, resentment. Yeah, resentment. Yeah, so the partner that we're trying to get re-engaged that's pulled away, we're, we're kind of asking them to, to take a risk and make a sacrifice right. here and say, are we willing to not focus on our own needs here? To say, even if my own need doesn't get met right away or even for the foreseeable future, am I willing to put my partner's need first mm. here and consider that? So it's a bit of a sacrifice and kind of taking a leap of faith in a lot of ways that if I do this, if I consistently meet my partner's need, will they then jump in and meet my need when they see that I'm committed and I'm engaged? So there's a reciprocity approach to what you're doing. So if you are considering somebody else's need, especially with your partner, there's a natural tendency for that partner to reciprocate that onto you. So it's that's where the, the mutuality comes in, right? Yeah, so in a healthy relationship, we see that reciprocity, but a lot of times with our couples, they've lost that over time, and they're living more out of fear, and I need to meet my own needs because you don't seem to care about me anymore. So, so yeah, so we kind of lose that reciprocity, but that's what we're trying to work back toward is a, a mutually beneficial relationship. Right. So if you step outside of yourself, you inspire your clients, um, your couples to think about the other partner, mm -hmm. then there's that mutual getting back. Mm -hmm. Right. And so that kind of brings us to this third component here of emotion regulation. Oh, bring it. Because I tell you what, if I'm pissed off at my partner, <laughs> uh, I'm going to have a hard time thinking about his or her needs. Exactly. Right? So it, really, I mean, this is kind of the foundation of the whole thing, because if I'm escalated, if my amygdala is firing off and all I can think are, are bitter, angry, or maybe fearful thoughts... Yeah, I'm not in a place to say, hmm, I, I wonder what they really yeah. need from me right now. You'd probably want to punch them in the face. Yeah. Sorry yeah. for being violent, but... 
Sometimes we have those thoughts, and most of us do a good job of not engaging them in, with physical activity, but we have those, I really don't like you right now moments, and yeah. I'm certainly not thinking about what you need from me. Absolutely. Right? So I'm seeing a lot of likes for that, right? <laughs> yes. So yeah. let, 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 me, let me stop you right there real quick before we go into that. Robin says... Oh, you call this willingness. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yes. It's willingness. It's if you're willingness. willing, you're winning. I love that. If yes. you're willing, you're can, winning. Can, can we all steal that, Robin? <laughs> if you're willing, you're winning. I love well, it. she is a, one of the couple's experts. She I, knows what she, the, she yeah. knows what's The happy talking. couple expert. Exactly. Yes, yeah, we know Robin focuses on the positive here. So. Yes. <laughs> Preaching to the choir here on this yeah. one. <laughs> L love geek. We love you. That's right. <laughs> okay. So emotional regulation is huge at this point. Mm -hmm. Because one of the things that you want to look at is if emotions are, like you said, the amygdala is firing, most likely your hands, your words, everything that you do at that point is reactionary. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you're not thinking about your partner. You're not able, if you can't calm your body, you can't calm your mind, and you can't have a rational connecting discussion with anybody. Uh, so and I tell my couples, my goal is not to have you never fight again. It's to have you have a respectful conversation when you do mm -hmm. uh, so you can fight well. Uh, so that it looks just like a disagreement instead of a fight. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, we're it's still almost as if, if, if you're high in anxiety and you can't regulate the emotions, it's, it's almost as if you disengage, mm -hmm. right? You, yeah. There's a disengagement going on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, which, I mean, it's a core component of emotion focused therapy, right? So we want to be accessible, responsive, and engaged. And so the idea with romantic competence here is it helps us to be all of those things. So if I can control my own feelings, and, and not to get rid of them, right? We're not stuffing them, but we're managing them and expressing them in hopefully healthy ways or healthy timing. Mm -hmm. Maybe I realize that now's not the time to say this thing I'm thinking or that I'm feeling this way because, again, that's my need. Yeah. I need to get that out so I feel better. This explains, this explains why some therapists would have those, um, the pulse monitors. Uh -huh, yep. Right, the pulse monitors because when you when when you dictate or you see the levels going up, mm -hmm. your heart rate's going up. Yep. Interesting. Yeah. And then you can't engage as well. And you can't en engage because the theory behind that or the idea behind that is that if your heart is being way too fa fast and you're up here, it's going to be hard for you to focus. Mm -hmm and engage with your... Yeah, so that's saying that you're in fight or flight mode and we all know we don't tend to have our best thoughts when we're in fight or flight. As John there Harrison says, Thanks, fight John. or flight. Thank you, John. <laughs> yes. You beat us to it. There you go. Yeah, so I mean, really, this idea of romantic competence is thinking what are the positive ways that we can engage as a couple. It, it, so if we are able to engage in these romantic competence skills of inside mutuality and emotional regulation, then we can do the other right. elements of emotion-focused therapy well. So we, we're not saying at all, for those of you who are non-therapists, okay, for the therapists here, you guys pretty much know what we're talking about, but we're not saying that you don't talk about some of the things that are disconnecting the both of you in the relationship. But there is a movement now to focus more on what's happening correctly. And, and like we said in, in the very beginning is what is going to promote connection as much as possible. That's what we need to have more discussions of. Mm -hmm in our sessions, correct? Yeah. And and so for the therapists that are watching, I know probably you're already doing this, I hope. And uh, and if not, just in terms of things we can be looking for, just the little things, especially around kind of the early precursor mm. look shifts and just the little physical movements that the partner may be missing because they're not regulating their affect yet, uh, we can help them to build that insight by noticing are, are their eyes mm. bugging out? Are they kind of pulling away? Have they crossed their arms? Body movement. Right. So notice it's those so, things yeah. to build awareness. But then also in terms of the positive, what are the positive shifts that they're making that their partner is also missing? Uh, yeah, I just remember uh, last week working with a, a kind of a high distress couple and, um, and the wife really has this habit of kind of, they call it going nuclear and, and kind of her eyes bug out. And she hasn't done that in a long time. She had more of kind of a, just a curious look on her face. And, and so talking with, uh, you know, calling attention to that and saying, did you notice that to the husband? And, uh, and so I, I think it's important mm -hmm. for us to help them to notice those things yep. and not just go with content, but what is the process of their yep. conversation? And that's really what romantic competence is speaking And to. you know, just to speak to that, um, in positive psychology, there's a lot of the positive loops or positive feedback. 
right? And these are the, the, the things that promote and lets the brain know, continue to do that mm -hmm. one thing to engage. So one of the things that I remember having my clients, you know, when they come in, they sit as far away as possible on the couch, right? <laughs> and in a few sessions, once we get into the core of the issue, they, they, they sit close to each other. Sometimes they're, they're touching each other. Those are some of the things we have to call out. You know, and, let, and, and say, hey, do you notice that you guys are sitting closer than last week? Those little feedback like that is a, the world to helping them to re-engage mm -hmm. and to connect with each other. Yeah, absolutely. You're absolutely right, George. Um, Strength-based perspective, absolutely. This is what we are trying to promote here at Cap Family Therapy. And what is this article again? So, so again, can... this, was, this was an article about romantic confidence. The, the lead author's name is Davila, D-A-V-I-L-A, -A, published 2017. I think it was in June, uh, a couple, Journal of Couple and Family Psychology. So it's one of the APA journals. So check that out. Interesting article. Uh, several, several other related articles about romantic confidence. But a great idea, I think, for us that, that work with couples a lot, that we can kind of be working on noticing these positive uh, skills here. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, I think, like, we we're talking about we have to help our clients to engage in the healthiest way and the best possible way sometimes i think we make counseling so complicated right mm -hmm. i don't know i always That's tell them there's me. no magic sauce i'm not fixing you no. really i'm <laughs> no. i'm creating a space here and highlighting some things that you can you can do differently and then it's up to you so yeah trying to highlight the good here too awesome you ready for food Heck yeah, it's dinner time. It's dinner time. Actually, <laughs> kind of late dinner, right? I guess. But we're here till 10 anyway. So. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so anyway, we're going to sign off right now, Cat Family Therapy. I'm going to um, link the website in this video. And we're going to try to do this, you know, what, every week sometime? Talk about relationship? Sounds good. Yeah. Thanks for watching, everybody. Yeah. Goodbye. Okay,